How is suicide bombing anything to do with any religion? In the Muslim world, we should have democracies rather than dictators and kings running Muslim countries who do not represent the Muslim public opinion. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I really want to thank the Global Peace and Unity Organization to get me here. The point I want to make tonight is this, that it is extremely important for Muslims to be able to convey to people living in Western countries that there is no correlation between Islam and terrorism. Unfortunately, through a planned campaign, Islam and terrorism have been linked and 1.3 billion Muslims are on the back foot, on the defensive, trying to justify that Islam has nothing to do with terrorism and what the point you need to make is this that according to the Holy Quran 124,000 messengers of God were sent on earth all of them with one message and the message was that the Almighty wanted us to be human beings rather than intelligent animals animals believe in might is right survival of the fittest whereas human beings have compassion and justice and Muslims was supposed to be and should be the community that, is, that should be compassionate and that should believe in justice just like every messenger of God to every human community brought the same message. So when something like 9-11 happens, we should be able to tell those people who blamed 1.3 billion people for the acts of 18 people that terrorism knows no religion. All religions preach the same thing. And unfortunately, we do not have either the political or intellectual leadership in the Muslim world to be able to convey our point of view. So we have things, we have words like Islamofascism, like radical Islam. When Tony Blair and George Bush say that the enemy of Western civilization is radical Islam, how is the man in street in the West supposed to differentiate? between a moderate Muslim and a radical Muslim. And why is Islam the issue? Before 9-11, 70% of all suicide bombings was by Tamil Tigers in Sri Lanka. No one ever blamed Hinduism for what they were doing. No one ever said that tell the Hindu priest to tell them that suicide bombing is not part of Hinduism. So why were we on the defensive? How is suicide bombing anything to do with any religion? And unfortunately, because we did not have the leadership and because sadly in the Muslim world, there were people who played along the game, called themselves moderate Muslims. We had military dictators in order to get Western support, called themselves enlightened moderates, perpetuating this image that perhaps it's something to do with Islam or radical Islam. All human communities have moderates, have liberals, have conservatives and have fanatics. Islam also has its fanatics, but the moderate majority is always liberal because our religion preaches, our religion accepts other communities and other religions. We all know that Islam believes in plurality. Muslims have lived with other religions. We have lived with Hindus, we have lived with Buddhists, we have lived with Jews, Christians. We accept Allah says in the Quran that it is through his will that we are distributed in different communities. It is through Allah's will that human beings distributed in different religions and communities. And Allah goes on to say that had he wanted, we would all become one community. And then it goes on to say, the ayat goes on to say, compete in being good human beings. So we have a religion which preaches plurality. We accept other religions. Nowhere does Allah tell us to convert everyone to one, one monoculture or mono religion. And all we are asked is to be better human beings, compete in being better human beings. So when we have things like the whole religion being called radical Islam, putting Muslims on the defensive, it is our failure to convey the two true teachings of Islam to the Westerners. And the second point is very important to understand. We have also failed to make the Western countries understand that there are two aspects of religion which are sacred. One is the Holy Quran and then the other is the personality of the Prophet peace be upon him. Unfortunately, when the, these, either the Quran or the our Prophet peace be upon him, they are ridiculed, the Muslim leadership has failed to convey to the Western countries that it pains and hurts us. Because the leadership doesn't do anything, we have radical youth demonstrating being violent 
and giving our enemies an opportunity to malign our religion. I think it's about time that the OIC, the heads of Muslim states, should stand up and convey this to the Western countries that just as the Holocaust in various European countries, if there is any doubting the Holocaust, people are put into jails. There is no freedom of expression when it comes to Holocaust and quite right. Because if anything hurts other human beings, why can't we lay off those subjects? Similarly, the Quran and the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, should also be considered if there's any caricature, if there's any ridicule about these two entities, it hurts us. We should be able to convey them to them. Why should we leave it to radicalize youth to go in the streets and burn and kill and give the opportunities to the enemies of Islam to malign us? And I consider this a failure of the Muslim intellectuals and the Muslim leadership. I think that this is a very good forum. Before we leave, we should pass a resolution that we have to make Western countries understand that these two aspects are sacred to us. Same time, we should make them understand that Islam, like all great religions, all great revealed religions of, of the Almighty Allah, want justice on this earth, want peace, want compassion. Islam makes us into human beings. The best aspects of a human being, nobility, generosity, selflessness, is what our religion teaches us, as opposed to being simply intelligent human beings, where we only think of us, where nothing is ever enough, where we worship the material God, where we've just seen this collapse of the banks, where you saw the ultimate greed, human greed, where poor people's savings were robbed by the few rich people. This is what Islam and all great religions preach against. They want us to be human, to think of the poor, to, to think of the underprivileged, to be just, to tell the truth. In other words, everything noble about a human being is in us because of our religion. I hope that Muslims living in Western countries will come in the mainstream. You will participate in the political process, not get marginalized, be able to convey your feelings through the political process, whether it is local council, whether it is your local MP, because when you get marginalized, I'm afraid marginalization creates radicalization. We don't want our youth to get radicalized. If we think that there is injustice being done to Muslims, we should have forums to speak out against. We should have forums where we, we can make our voice heard. And that's why I believe that the youth, Muslim youth living in the Western countries should take part in the political process and not get marginalized. And I also feel that inshallah the time is coming where in the Muslim world we should have democracies rather than dictators and kings running Muslim countries who do not represent the Muslim public opinion. And because they do not represent the Muslim public opinion, we have puppets sitting there who are manipulated by superpowers for their own ends. As is unfortunately is happening in Pakistan, where a puppet is making our own army kin our own people in the name of war, war on terror. Whereas in fact, it has become a war of terror. Thank you very much.